All right, everyone. So today's our final day of the advanced Google for Business class. Uh, taking an overview just based on my syllabus of what we've accomplished. We have looked at Google Plus as a great social network to be able to reach an audience. If you've got a website only, um, you're not reaching enough of an audience. You also need social media. So we talked about Google Plus on the first day. On the second day, we talked about Google Webmaster Tools, Google Analytics. Those were tools that Google gives us to be able to track how effective our online presence is. Where is our traffic coming from? Uh, what pages are most popular? All of that stuff. That was last week. This week, we're going to look at Google Drive and all of the different things that it offers us. The online and offline versions of Google Drive. Google Drive for mobile, so for desktop or for mobile devices. Using it for creating collaborative documents. We'll see what that means. And then also for creating forms. F-O-R-M-S, forms, not forums. Forms to be able to collect information. So these are, of course, free things that Google gives us. Um, and they're going to be very useful for businesses. So what we'll do first is go ahead and open your web browser. We will use the same login information that we've used on previous days our Google login information, but we will we will go to the website drive.google.com. Now this used to be. Oh, uh, can you can you turn the volume down there on your? Can you turn the volume down on your phone? Um, Google Drive used to be Google Docs, D-O-C-S, Docs, Google Documents, and it was focused on creating documents online, and that was it. But now it's expanded to more things, more storage options. So now they call it Drive, which to me doesn't quite make that much sense. Uh, either is it drive like driving a car and things like that but no it's drive like a like a hard drive where you store stuff on a computer but this is cloud storage so what we'll do is go to drive.google.com and because I already have an account it's probably gonna look a little bit different than yours but what you want to do is log in with the Google information that you used previously and then we'll take it from there. So go ahead and log in to drive.google.com. Okay, so I think um, I've logged in with one of my accounts, which I haven't used. So it looks pretty empty here. Um, for you, it might look a little bit different simply because you've got a brand new account. As for myself, I've, I've used this before, but it might look slightly different. Does this look uh, different than on yours? Anyone? Is it the same or different? Just so that I can get a sense of what yours looks like. It's the same. Looks the same, perhaps? Okay. So what we've got with Google Drive is cloud storage. So you've probably heard of that term, cloud, or the cloud. That's just the fancy term that people use nowadays for the internet. The internet, of course, is the global network of all computers interrelated or interlocked, all networks 
interlocked. The internet. That's all the computers of the world connected together. The internet. What we're doing right now specifically is we're on a web page. We're on a website. And those two are technically different, but we're on a website. On the web. That's a portion of the internet. The World Wide Web, what we visit on a web browser, is different than the whole internet. The whole internet is everything. Email, news groups, RSS, websites, everything. But websites are part of the web, the World Wide Web. So on the web, on the internet, we can have hard drives. We can have storage locations. Just like I've got this USB drive right here, this is local storage. I've got it with me at this point. I can save something to it. It's local. If you want a copy of what I have here, I have to give it to you and you make a copy. That's, that was the old way. They called that sneaker net. You've heard of internet? There's sneaker net because you'd have to walk to someone in your sneakers and give them the file in the old days. But now because we've got all these network connections, we have hard drives as big as this whole room or a room full of hard drives that is connected to the internet. And we can access it here. That's what we've got. This is our free cloud storage. We can upload files. We can create files. We can rename them and all of that. And that's why now it's called Google Drive instead of simply Google Docs. Because it used to be you can only create Office documents, word processing documents, spreadsheets documents, etc. But now you can basically put anything here. That's what this is telling me. Google Drive lets you access your stuff on every computer and mobile device. Add files by using the new button. So you can be on a desktop, smartphone, tablet, laptop, whatever basically, and connect to your free account here to access your files. On mine, at the bottom left corner, mine says 219 megabytes out of 15 gigabytes. Because I've got an account that I've used before, some of my space is being used there, 219 megabytes or so, but if yours is brand new, it should be zero or really low. Um, do you also have it saying 15 gigabytes or a different value? Uh, 15, same. 15, okay. So that's 15 gigabytes for free. Um, and a few years ago, that was huge. 15 gigabytes, I'll never be able to fill that. And now, 15 gigabytes can be filled up with actually like two or three, uh, or maybe just one, I think, uh, Blu-ray movie. One Blu-ray movie might not fit in that. Uh, a plain old DVD uh, held about 5 gigabytes, 4.77 or so. So 5 gigabytes on one DVD. So that would be 5, 10, 15. Three DVDs of space. A Blu-ray, I believe, holds around 30, depending on all of the features and such. 30 gigabytes. So the, a Blu-ray has much more data, so I wouldn't be able to really fit that in there. Um, and you've got these simple controls on the left side, my drive, a little triangle perhaps. If you have subfolders, we'll see what that is in a moment. Shared with me, Google Photos, Recent, Start, Trash. So the good thing is that if you upload files, delete files, they'll go to a trash, just like the recycle bin on your desktop on Windows or your trash bin on Mac. You can still undelete files that you've deleted. So let's try this. If we click either on New on the left or My Drive at the top, let's try this. Let's click on the left side, the big red New button. Click New. It says, would you like to create a folder? Upload a file? Upload a whole folder? Or create one of these types of documents? Docs, Sheets, Slides. That's Google's term. <coughs> For the common terms that we've heard before, if you've got Microsoft Office, what is the software we use to write documents? Word. So Microsoft Word, Google Docs. It's the word processor, writing documents. In Office, Microsoft Office, we would use Excel for spreadsheets to track data and such. And it's got Google Sheets. And then in Word, if we wanted to make uh, presentations um, for meetings and such, that's PowerPoint. 
here it's Google Slides. So it's got the common Office software built in here. And then there's more, which we'll explore a little later. Under New here, let's click Google Docs. What pops open is a screen here that looks like a word processor. You might get a pop-up on the left that says get a head start with templates. From resumes to project trackers, docs, sheets, and slides now come with a bunch of new templates to choose from. That's pretty useful. We'll look at those a little later. But instead of starting with a brand new empty sheet of paper like this, we can start with a template with a design that's already, de that's already looks nice. We just have to fill in our own information. We'll look at it later. So I'll say no thanks. Then what I get here at the top is a relatively simple word processor. Um, at the top it says this is an untitled document. There's a bunch of menu items in here. This is what confuses people sometimes. These menu items are related to this document, not your web browser. Depending on your web browser, the web browser itself might have file, menu, edit menu, options menu but these menu items are related to this document. They're inside the web browser window, so be careful there. There's a variety of quick tools to select from, and then some other options on the right side. But uh, right now this document is untitled. Let's go ahead and click at the top here where it says Untitled Document. Click on that. What would you like to call it? I'll just call it whatever. My first Google Doc. Press enter. Now it's got that name. You don't need to put dot .doc or anything like that. We'll, we'll get to that. What we'll do is we'll see that we've got this editing area with a lot of options which we will look at, but for the moment just go ahead and click in this editing area where the cursor is blinking and we will write something. We'll write, today is the last day of our advanced Google class. We learned, colon, and then I'm going to put some bullet points. I want to add a few bullet points of what we learned. So just like a word processor, I have the ability to add bullet points. We should see up on that quick bar that bar with those tools, you should see bullet points right there, those little bullet points. So I'm going to click bulleted list. So what did we learn? Google Plus for companies is very useful. Enter. We learned that uh, Google Analytics slash Search Console helps us track our data. And then third, which is today, Google Drive is cloud storage. Now I want to make the word cloud storage italicized. Just like a word processor. All of this you're probably familiar with. You've used it in Word or maybe on the Mac in Pages or maybe OpenOffice or any software out there, so this is nothing new really. We're going to see what the new things about it are in just a moment compared to the others. But okay, word processing software. You can write documents. I can do that in Word. What's the difference? Well, if I've got my laptop at home and I started to write my project in Word on Windows or Pages on the Mac, and then I leave my house and I come here and I want to keep working on it, I didn't bring my laptop, so I don't have Word, I don't have my files. But if I have my files saved on Google Drive or other cloud solutions, then my file can be accessed anywhere. I can work on it at home, I can come here and keep working on it. All I have to do is log in. Log into my account and I've got this waiting for me. Have you noticed that the top center, it says all changes saved in Drive. 
and if you just put your mouse on it, every change you make is automatically saved in Drive. Last edit was seconds ago. So I don't have to manually go to File, Save. If I go to the File menu, I don't have anything that says Save. Like I'm, nor like I'm used to, there's nothing that says Save. Because it's automatically saving every time. So at the top it says, all changes saved. I'm going to start to write something. I'm writing something. As I'm writing something, do you see at the very top it says saving? As soon as I'm done typing, all changes saved. So as I'm writing, it's saving. And when I'm done writing, it's done saving. So that's one of the big. That's one of the big um, uh, positive things about this. Probably the biggest, that it automatically saves your work because I'm sure it's happened throughout your life as you, of using computers. You've been working on something, you didn't save it, the power goes out, the computer crashes, something happens, and you lost some of your work. Um, and so with cloud solutions, with cloud storage like this. Things can things automatically save. The big downside, of course, I'm going to press enter a couple of times here. I'm going to write some pros and cons, uh, positive and negative things of this. So I'm going to say pros, enter a couple of times, cons. I want to make pros to stand out, be big and bold, and I have a bold button and a size. But what would be better would be instead of setting this to normal text, to have styles to use word processing documents effectively. We just don't want to arbitrarily choose bolding and sizes and such. They often have some sort of style you can attach, built-in styles that you can change that, that are already pre-made that work really well. So I want to list a few pros and a few cons of using Google Drive. So I'm going to select pros, and instead of normal text, I'll say this is going to be maybe something like a heading number two, see it becomes bigger. Cons, I will also select heading two. And then within each of these sections, I'm going to add some more bullet points in here. So notice how this stands out compared to this because it was set to a heading. The text that I've been writing normally is normal text listed up there. But anything that needs to divide up my document into sections is best set as a heading. And I have a few other styles. Title, so if I'm writing a term paper and I need the title to be big and bold and centered and all of that, title. Subtitle of my paper, there it is. Headings, one through three, other options. So not a huge amount of styles, but enough that are, that are useful. You can always change them as necessary. Because what happened was when I added that as a heading 2, it basically changed um, bolding and styles and such. 11 points for regular text, 16 points for heading 2. <clears throat> but let's say for pros, I'm going to add bullet points between that group. What are some positive things? Always available. Free. Um, auto save. Lots of storage. 15 gigabytes for free. But again, that might not be so much because now you can have 32 gigabytes on these little things. 64 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes. I remember uh, in the late 90s when my family got our first good computer. We had a computer in around 1995, but it was like a second-hand computer, pretty low quality. When we got one in the late 90s, I remember it had a one gigabyte hard drive. It had a whole 1,000 megabytes of storage, and that was in 1996, 97 or so, nearly 20 years ago, one gigabyte. 
And now our hard drives come with 1,000 gigabytes, a terabyte, two terabytes. There was a student here that told me his came, he just bought it. I think he said his had like three terabytes, a laptop. So storage, lots of storage, relatively lots for free online. And how fast now they mine? I mean, what is uh, 2011? Things are always changing, definitely. You have a, a laptop from 2011 or even one year ago, two years ago, you're going to see something even newer every year. What's the price then? What's the range now then? Uh, the range? For, for which things? Because okay, there's. Uh, processor. Processors, processors are still kind of in a in a little bit. They're they're still kind of the same sort of level, but usually you're seeing the i3, i5, i7 processors. Definitely, uh, th three and five and seven. But then they also have first generation, second generation, third. I think they're on fifth generation right now, uh, and on fifth generation they have i3 and i5 and i7 for different prices. So it keeps evolving, and RAM, it used to be, you know, 2 gigabytes of RAM was a lot, and then 4 was a lot, and then 6 was a lot. Uh, mine has 16 gigabytes, and yeah, I bought that of RAM, and, of RAM. Of RAM. and yeah, I bought that, that, and I bought that actually more than a year ago. So the person that just bought their laptop uh, this week, he, his also had 16 so uh, that might be a really big size for a little while. You can open it's like a tantric size and then it doesn't slow down. At all. Exactly. I, I really push it because what I do also is use very complex software like Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So I can have Photoshop running and other software running at the same time. And yeah, uh, lots of RAM there and I hardly ever yeah. gets that high. Yeah. And uh, hard drive space. When I bought my laptop, uh, I think it was two years ago. Now that I think about it, it was about it was one terabyte, and I thought that was huge. And then now they're coming with two terabytes, three terabytes, and such. So things are things evolve so far with computers. Even Google Drive, it, they didn't give you in the beginning a few years ago. They didn't give you 15 gigabytes. They gave you, um, you know, uh, like 100 megabytes or something. I don't remember, but a very small amount. And things evolve. But there are negative aspects of this also, so let's write a few cons, a few negatives. One of the negatives is not always available. Wait a minute, I thought I said always available up there and now not always available. Here's the big catch about online services. If for whatever reason Google computers crash, then you don't have access to your files. They don't your files don't get deleted because they've got backups of backups of backups of backups. They back up a lot. Whereas if I've got my document on my desktop and my computer crashes, I lost everything. But if I make a copy from my computer to one of these USBs, for example, my computer crashes, okay, I've got a backup on my on my drive right here. Well, what if this little drive fails? Okay, now I lost everything because my computer crashed, my drive crashed, these things also fail. So backup of a backup. Google has backups of backups of backups of backups. But the problem is, maybe they've crashed or something and your files are not available at that moment. Or perhaps also your internet connection. Maybe your internet connection is not working. Google works just fine. They work like 99.99% .99 of the time. Um, but your computer, your Cox cable or AT&T cable or or Time Warner or whatever might not work at that moment and you can't access your files because they're online not always available um, what I'll say about cloud storage also is I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's the Wild West the Wild West connotes that Things are still new. St things are still getting worked out. They're wild. There's no, if you watch any of the classic cowboy movies and such, you know, as the U.S. expanded into the West, people made it further out than the law, than laws. So the bad guys could run things uh, better than the than the sheriff and all of that. The Wild West. That just means when anything's the Wild West, it means it's very little laws. It's still being developed and so forth. That's what cloud storage is to some degree. Um, this stuff is so new that the laws that have existed for decades 
in all the countries of the world basically are having a hard time catching up with this online stuff. What does privacy mean now online? How secure are our documents online? Obviously I can really only talk about US laws to the degree that I understand them. There's the Constitution which guarantees the right to privacy and such and that has existed for over 230 years. But the internet has been around in the last 30 years or so. Those laws that have been around all of these hundreds of years, how do they apply to this brand new stuff that's one year old, five years old, ten years old, thirty years old? That's a very th hard thing that governments are struggling with. And so the point of all of this is, do you feel safe putting your private files online? Do you feel okay with uh, having a big company like Google take care of your files? Like Microsoft, like Apple, like Samsung, all of these companies. They're companies that are out there to make money for their shareholders and such. That's the, that's the truth. A company exists to make money. Yes, there are companies that exist for the good of people and all of that, but these companies, really, their number one concern is to make money. And there have been many instances of things that were seemingly private not quite being private. So perhaps one of the biggest cons of cloud storage is what are the privacy settings? What are the privacy rules? What are my protections? And many of these companies are struggling with that because they have to balance profitability with users being happy. Because on a technical level, these companies really don't have to care about their users. They have to care about their shareholders. They have to care about the people that have financed the company to return profits. Especially if they're a big company like Microsoft or Apple or Google or Samsung or Nintendo or Sony, etc., etc. That's the truth, unfortunately. So you have to decide, am I going to put my tax returns here? I've got 15 gigabytes and I can back it up and it'll be safe forever. But is someone going to break into my account? Is someone going to break into Google servers? Are they going to guess my password? Where was the failure point? Was it on me? Was it on Google? Or was it in between? Was it at AT&T? Did AT&T get hacked? And my password, which was an amazing strong password, but they hacked AT&T and they read my password and now they have my access to my Google Docs. That could be the biggest detriment to using this stuff. I can really only tell you on a personal level, I use it all the time. I don't put the most sensitive stuff there. I don't put my tax returns there. I don't put uh, my passwords and stuff there. I still keep that on a little hard drive in my house, but then uh, classic uh, problem there, what if someone breaks in? They get that little hard drive and walk out with it, and there's my whole life. No matter that I didn't put it into Google Drive, or Microsoft OneDrive, or Apple iCloud. This is the wild west of all of this, because it's all digital. It's, it's all pixels and data. It's not real, but it's still real and valuable. That's kind of, a, of an artistic Thing to talk about, but it's something that's being developed and worked out, and that could be um, something for you to think about about using all of this. But I'm going to keep it positive, and I'm going to say that I'm going to use Google Drive and all these cloud storage things for positive and useful things. And I and I know that the companies are working to make this as as safe and private as possible. Uh, is it there completely yet at the moment? I wouldn't think so, but time will tell. So I've got this document, and we've got all of these tools here. You can explore these on your own. You can print, don't print, but you can print, you can undo, you've got Format Painter and all of that stuff there. You can go up to the Insert menu and insert an image or a link or a drawing, comments and all of that. That's, usu that's the usual stuff. Let me show you what's new and different and cool about cloud solutions like Google Drive. We can have collaborative documents. I've created this document and I want all of you to connect to it and help me fill it out. Maybe I'm working with teammates on a project and I want all of us to work on one document together. I'm tired of writing a document, attaching it to an email and sending it to seven people and then seven people respond with seven versions of that document and I have to put it all together. We've got these things that we can use, that we can share these documents. Everyone connects to the same one document with their own login information and everyone can edit it. And I can see a paper trail, so to speak. I can see a history of it being edited. 
So let's check this out. On the top right corner, there's a, there's a blue share button. It has a lock, which means really only you have access to it at the moment. It's private to only me, which is terrible grammar right there. That should be saying something like private only for me. But I'm going to click on that, share. It's going to pop up with various options. Share with others, people, advanced. I can put in person's name or email. Name if I already have their email in my Google Contacts. But if I don't have the person in my contacts, I add their email there. So let's say I'm sending this to John at smith.com. So I'm going to send an invitation, basically an email, to John to be able to edit my document. Notice here, John can edit it. Maybe I just want John to look at it, not really to do anything with it, just to look at it. Well, we have can view. John can look at it. Can't really do anything else. He can just look at it. In the middle is comment. They're not going to be able to edit the actual content. It's not going to be able to edit my actual content in the middle of it all. It's going to allow them to add a comment on the side of the page that doesn't edit the original contents. So that could be useful. Instead of them editing directly, they leave a comment that says, I think this should be reworded to say private for you. And then I can apply it. So we've got different ways here. We'll look at advanced in a moment. I've also got here at the very top right, this is another way to do this. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate this way. You don't have to do this exactly, but let's look at this. Let's click Get Shareable Link. Click that, and now there is a link that I can attach to a email. I can put it on my website. I can tweet about it. This link right here can be shared just about any way. And notice that's set to can view. I'm going to do this. I'm going to activate instead of can view, I'm going to select anyone with this link can edit. Now, obviously, be careful about that because this link, if you share it anywhere, if it winds up anywhere in the world, with that option, can edit. Anyone in the world can edit it. They don't need a Google account and permissions and such. Anyone can edit it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create this shareable document, and I'm going to share this with you guys in the room right now so that you can all connect to my document. I'm going to um, click Done. And now I've, I've copied that link, and I'm going to give you guys that link in the network folder. Let me just set this up. Shared doc. Here's my link. If you go into computer window and then network location and then campus advanced Google, there's a document in there that I just added called shared doc. Inside shared doc is a web address. Copy that web address into your web browser. Just copy and paste that. And that's going to take you to my document that I currently have open. I want to try this out. Everyone try this. Open up my link in your document, in your web browser. A new person just connected to it. There's your cursor. You are an anonymous lemur, and not that an, an anonymous quagga. It's funny, Google puts animals. You're all little animals. Um, so over here, anonymous lemur. Over here, anonymous quagga. I don't know what a quagga is. It looks like a little horse. 
zebra, and each of you have their own little cursor. Try clicking somewhere in my document and notice how your cursor follows you. And then, for fun, because this document doesn't matter, click somewhere and type something. You're going to see that from your computer, you are editing my document. So, there you go. You're, you're writing in my document. Now, of course, I can go in and say, oh, you misspelled that. That should be loop. So we can all work on each other's document. Actually, it's my document, but we're all working on it together. And at any point, I can go back to the share settings and turn it off. Okay, no more, no more collaboration. But, oh, there we go. Now we've got a brand new here, Anonymous Duck. Uh, so now all these little critters are helping me edit my document. And um, anyone can go in, change what's been edited, change colors, fonts, add pictures, links, everything. This is a fully editable document, even though you didn't create it. Everyone has the ability to, to edit it. So just for practice, here's what we'll all do. Let's go to the very bottom right here. At the very bottom, put a spot here, put your name. So everyone should put their own name. And then one thing that you learned in the class, besides what I've already written up there. So everyone take a moment, go to the very bottom, add your name, and one thing that you learned. The problem with collaborative documents, of course, is whoops, I'm stepping on top of someone else's text. Go ahead in there, everyone. Go down to the bottom and add some space. And so the usefulness about this is that different people can collaborate on a document. This is one of the great things about having cloud storage. So I'm going to go back up to what we learned. I'm going to add here collaborative. collaborative. People can collaborate together. I've created this document and started it, and now other people can add to it, improve it, make it better. Uh, me, as the owner of the document, have the option somewhere, revision history, I have, I have this because it's my document. I can go up to the file menu and look at see revision history. So this will show me all of the changes that have happened and who made the change. So you might not see it, but if you're on file, you can look at revision history. If it's my document, I don't think you can see revision history, but if it's your document, you can. So I, if I activate see revision history on my document, it tells you right there. I edited it at 1245, and then I can see what it looked like. I edited it at 1259, and it looked like that, and then at, at 112, so I changed something to collaborative. These items were added. Then at that time, that changed, and that was added. So this is very cool, a revision history. Um, and I can go back. So I'm seeing the same thing as this. You're seeing this on the side here? Yes. Oh, OK. Did, you, did it show up automatically, or did you select it? I select the, uh, the thing. The file revision history? Yes, yes. Okay, good. So, good. Then it lets everyone look at it. That could be useful, too. It's revision history, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm seeing their revision history, and um, let's say, okay, I, I'm at a point where I actually didn't want it to say these items. I have restore version. I'm not going to restore it, but uh, if I'm working on this document for a month, and then there's a certain point oh, uh, three days ago that I feel that the document went off track, I can come back to the revision history, all of the month-long data of revisions is saved. It's easy for Google to save this kind of document, and content doesn't take up any space compared to pictures and videos, so they have 
I don't believe they have a limit to their revisions. And I can say, okay, I want to go back to this document at this point because this was a better version. I can click Restore. So then I can go back up to the share button. I can then change the link off. Save that. And then I believe now if you guys try to make another change, so try to go in and make another change. It doesn't let you anymore. Did something tell you you can't do it anymore? It just didn't let you. So then I turned it off, and now, now you can't make changes. So I turned it back on. Try to make a change again to see, did it let you? Yeah. OK, so you can turn it on, you can turn it off. Can you answer your question over the share, the, the share button, if you just uh, look at, mm -hmm. then you go back to the yes. website, you know, and then anyone with the link can get it. Mm -hmm. um, on more, I click on more. Um, what's the difference between um, the option number two and the option number three? So two and three here? Yeah. So on anyone with the link and off specific people? Yeah. Oh, the off meaning is, is say Mr. A won't be allowed to, we won't share the, the document with Mr. A, right? Is that what the meaning is? Exactly. If I send an email, if I use the third option mm -hmm. and I send an email, it's going to go to specific people, so only Mr. A could edit it, but not Mr. B. Even if Mr. B got the link, he was not approved to edit the document, only Mr. A. If I have it on this, Mr. A or B or C or X, anyone can edit it if they get that link. And then actually the first option then is now it is completely public. Maybe you can even find this document by doing a Google search. So if you stumble upon it, that way anyone can edit it even from a, from a Google search. That more button is also useful there because then, okay, let's say I do anyone with the link, anyone, no sign in required, can edit it, can comment, can view. So that's, a, that's an extra thing that not too many people need to do. That's why it's kind of hidden in the extras, in this extra more screen. And you have the default, anyone with this link send it to specific people, that's basically the option like that one. Because I've selected their names from right here, and then I've sent it to them. And then the then that big, big public option, it's not, there's nowhere to turn it on except here because it's so public and could be potentially dangerous. Inside of the share button, I've also got advanced. If I get back to advanced, uh, here's the link which lets anyone to do it, and I can go directly to Gmail here. Open up my Gmail, copy this link and paste it in so I can send it to my email list in Gmail, for example, because the one here is not that powerful. I can put people's names one at a time and such. But if I have a distribution list in my Gmail with 100 people, it would be better to click Gmail, it'll take me to Gmail, and I can send that list. And then you've got the big social networks here. This is a common practice also. I listen to a lot of podcasts uh, on a bunch of shows and topics. Um, there's like technology shows that I listen to and they say, well, here's what's coming up in future episodes. Check it out on our Google Docs. And so they tweet about it and said, here's the guests coming up in the next few weeks. They mostly have it to allow you to view it, but not edit it. 
but I can easily share this document, editable or not, to different networks. So let's say you have friends and family, Facebook. You want everyone to give you ideas on what sort, sort of events we should have for the big family reunion. I create a Google Doc here, and then I post it to my Facebook. It's going to require me to sign in, and then it'll be added to my Facebook, and then all my friends and family can follow the link and add their opinions about what to do for the family reunion. A few other little edits right there that takes me back to that the same way. This will tell me who has access, so this advanced screen tells me who I've given access to. No one else really yet. Prevent editors from changing access and adding new people. Disable options to download and copy commenters and viewers. By, at the moment, if I let people view my document, it looks like they can copy and paste, download it, or print it. So that might be something you need to do. You didn't expect, you just let people look at it, but you didn't expect it that they can print it. So if you don't want them to print it, you'll have to turn that on and save it. And now whatever way you share it, either via the link or social media, people will be able to comment and edit it and such, but not print it, not download it, and not copy it for themselves. And the one above it is that if I give other people access to view or edit the document, they, in turn, can get other people to view or edit the document. If I don't want other people, if I don't want friends of friends to look into this, if it's only the immediate family, I don't want the other cousins and such to make comments on this document, I can turn this on. Don't let other people share the ability to get more people into this document. So there are a variety of settings here, not complicated, just things to look at and to think about. I've used Google Docs and such for years to collaborate with people. That way we're not out of sync in documents. It's so frustrating to have an offline document for me nowadays because there's still people that I deal with that want to edit the document and send it to me on email. I say, why are you sending it to me on email? Just share it with me. I'll edit the original one. And it has all of this history and all of that great stuff. But, yes? Be able to share the document in foreign language. Like read it in English since when they go translating and then send it back to me. Oh, that's a good question. You know, go back and you have to translate back to English and edit it from that. That's a good point. Uh, I, I don't quite have an answer because I usually only deal with documents in English. So I don't know. For international, um, that's what I would say when I send you a document and then you translate it in their language and come back. And I have to translate it back to the English one. <laughs> but look at this. I'm looking at, I type something in Spanish. And then up on the up on the tools menu, translate document. It looks like I've also got voice typing. I'll play with that in a moment. But let's see, translate document. What happens there? Translate a copy of my first document into Arabic, Basque, Chinese, Dutch, Spanish. Okay, it looks like it takes my whole document and translates it into Spanish. So we have their Japanese at the bottom. Um, let's see what happens. I'm going to translate my whole document into Spanish. So that makes a copy of my current document as a translated version. So, hoy es el último día de nuestra clase avanzada Google. And then that was already in Spanish there, and it didn't understand the Japanese to translate it into Spanish, apparently. <laughs> so the whole document, um, the whole document itself can be translated, it looks like. Yeah. So that seems pretty useful. <laughs> and um, that's what I like about Google Docs because I translated it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's pretty useful. I was always thinking if they translate it to their language and then they come back and send it back to you to translate back to English and then if they could figure out that it's the same meaning. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Idioms change so much. Yeah. Like if I say the Wild West, that has a meaning in English. Yeah. But in another language, it might be way too literal. Oh, 
the western direction is wild. Uh, I'm going to try something that I just saw up here. Tools, voice typing. I have a little microphone here, so let's see what happens. Voice typing, click to speak. Allow microphone. So I'm practicing with my camera to dictate what I'm talking about here. Smiley face. You can say period and new line. Okay, so it's going to train me. But there you go. So I'm practicing with my camera to dictate what I'm talking about here. <laughs> Perfect. And then I even said smiley face. Yeah, you know, so you turn now. <laughs> exactly. But I would have drawn a little nose. Um, so that's pretty useful. Voice, typing. You need a microphone, of course. I've got a microphone right here. And so I was able to work. Let me see if it works in Spanish. Voy a practicar usando el Google Drive para escribir documentos. We are practical santo el Google Drive para escribir documentos. Okay, that part kind of worked, but not the first part. Maybe the more you use it, the smarter it gets, probably. So another, another useful feature of this. So here we go. We've got uh, some, Google, some Google Docs to, that we worked with, specifically Word Processor. We're going to take a break, and we're going to look at the other kinds of Google Docs um, briefly, because they're self-explanatory to a degree, the big idea is that they're online and such. And we'll look at other aspects of Google Drive. And we'll go on. So it's uh, let's round up. Let's say it's 1:30. We'll be back at 1:40, and we'll go on.